Hey, what's up, Xavier and Zach? Hey, how are you? Yeah. Pretty good. Um, word, sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. Um, so, um, some other people might uh, trickle in, uh, but we've got a nice little intimate gathering. Uh, so the topic for today is uh, functions. Um, last week, I think I said that it was Docker, but that's actually next week. So we'll be, I'll be talking about Docker next week. Uh, today is uh, functions. So hopefully you knew that, that it was functions. Um, anyways, well, since we've only got a small number, um, I kind of actually maybe want to make this, I uh, want to cater to you guys since you're here. Um, do you guys have any like specific questions uh, regarding functions? Anything at all that I can maybe go over or, or help clarify? So I'm at the beginning stages. Um, cool. You know, just the basic functionality of what they're, you know, able to do and using them properly. Uh, that's going to be the thing that I've been struggling with the most. Okay. Nice. Um, we can definitely address that. Um, uh, Zach, do you have any, are you, is there anything specific that you're maybe hoping to get out of this today? Um, not sure. I feel pretty comfortable with functions. Uh, I mean, um, I don't know if we're going to be specifically talking about arrow functions or if this is going to be pre. Uh... Yep, I was definitely uh, planning on getting to arrow functions for sure and how they're different from uh, function declarations. Yeah, because that's why I mostly use arrow functions. So Okay. Cool, that's good to know. So um, I think what I'll do is let's start with, uh, um, I'll start with some of the more basic stuff uh, for Xavier and then we'll I move on. Arrow functions. Say what? I'm at like the arrow function. Okay, function, so. okay, cool. So why don't, maybe, maybe this is what we'll do. We'll start with uh, um, arrow functions and how they're different from uh, function declaration. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Hey, what's up, Shane? All right, so let me uh, share my screen here. from a different uh, thing. Backwards, but whatever, that's fine. Okay. Okay. So uh, to start with, um, let's just quickly recap uh, the two like main ways that you can write a function. It's kind of like two and a half. Um, so one way is to do this, um, do a thing, I can do that. Um, perfectly fine. I can also define, I can also do anonymous functions. Uh, which look like this, but if you're gonna do it this way, uh, it's got to be, um, uh, it has to be as an expression. This is a, uh, so I'd have to do something like this. I'd have to put it in parentheses in this case, since I'm just like leaving out in the open. Um, if I'm gonna use an anonymous function, meaning it's not named, uh, I have to, put it in the context of something. I can't just throw an anonymous function out in the, in the middle of the ocean. Um, but you know, these are useful for like callback functions and, and stuff. The other way to write a function of course is 
with the arrow. So do another thing such as this. Um, and then of course I can do the anonymous version of a uh, arrow function, which interestingly, um, you can throw these out in the middle of the ocean. Uh, this is this is perfectly valid. Whereas I can't just do that with this, with an unnamed uh, function declaration. So, fun fact. Um, but these are really the kind of the main the main ways to write a function. And of course, uh, when you invoke a function, um, syntax is exactly the same. Do a thing do another thing. Um, calling an anonymous function is a little bit weirder because uh, since it doesn't have a name, you can't reference it easily like this. So you'd have to uh, do this. <laughs> or in this case, um, you'd wrap that in parentheses and then do that. This isn't common um, and it looks weird. It's also hard to read. Uh, so just not very common. Um, and uh, I don't recommend doing it this way unless you know what you're doing, because uh, it can get a little weird looking. But anyways, those are the three, those are those are really the, the ways that you can, uh, at least syntactically, deal with the function. And of course, there's parameters that you can put in here. Um, and that is the same for all of the uh, functions. But okay, so this sets us up for uh, the real fundamental difference between the two. So I'm going to get rid of these anonymous guys um, because whether they're anonymous doesn't affect um, uh, whether they're anonymous or not. They work the same way if they're written as a declaration or an arrow. Okay, so the fact that they're named or not isn't going to affect the functionality. It's it's whether it's written as a declaration or an arrow. That's what differentiates how they work. Um, so the first thing that uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to call um, I'm going to call each function, um, and we're going to look at the this keyword. Um, so Xavier, have you dealt with this yet? No. Okay. Have you heard of it? I've heard of this. Yes. I've okay. heard of this and I've been kind of working with return. Okay, cool. So um, now uh, I guess the, oh, I'm glad you, I'm glad you mentioned the return because arrow functions also have a couple other um, little syntactical ways of handling returns. Uh, they're, they're called an implicit return. Uh, so with this arrow function, this is called an explicit, meaning that I, if, I, if I put curly braces here, that means that if I wanna return something from this function, I have to explicitly return a value. Okay, because a function by default, if you don't use a return statement, uh, the return value is undefined. So for example, if I do x equals do a thing, well, x is going to be undefined. And we can prove that by running this. Let's go ahead and write main. And there it is, it's undefined. Whereas if I uh, do another thing, of course, I get something. Um, although uh, with arrow functions, I can, um, there's another way of doing return, which is nice when you only have like a, a really simple single line expression that you want to return. You can omit the curly braces um, and just right after the arrow, just put the expression that you want to return. And that's the same as doing the explicit return in the curly braces. Um, 
There is one slight complication, or I should say uh, there's a slight um, exception to this. Uh, if you want to return an object, well, it's not going to work like this anymore. Um, because now, as you can see, the syntax looks identical to using the explicit return way. And if you want to implicitly return an object, you have to use this, this expression. You got to put it, you got to put it in parentheses and then, uh, you know, here's your, then you have to define your object like you would normally. Um, so now if I run this, I'll see my, I'll see my object. Um, and this parentheses syntax is also, if you want to be like explicit about your implicit return, <laughs> uh, which is kind of weird, uh, the parentheses also, you can put whatever expression you want in the parentheses. So if I put the value 100, I'm going to see 100. Okay, so these are optional unless you use, unless you're return, unless you're implicitly returning an object. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, cool. So those are all the kind of exceptions and, and uh, ways that arrow functions are a little different from the function declarations. Um, there's just a few more ways of writing it. But the real important thing, aside from syntax, uh, there's, a, there's actually a, a, a fundamental difference between the two things. And it has to do with um, the way that functions in JavaScript um, interact with objects. And let me show you what I mean. So um, Xavier, do you know what a method is? Yes, but I wouldn't be able to define it. Okay. So if you were to try, how would you maybe frame it? Like, what does it have to do with? A method is a set of actions being done to an object? Sort of. Um, the key there is object. Uh, so I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, a method is just a property of an object that happens to be a function. So you're really close. So for example, let's say I have a person. Uh, cool, Shane, no worries. Um, so let's say we have a person. Um, a person always has properties, right? So I can have a, a name and uh, I can have like an age, right? Um, but there's nothing, because a function in JavaScript is nothing special really. It's just, a, it's just another type of value. I can have it be a function that does a thing. Right, so in this case, um, I have a I have a person who has a property called speak, which is just a function. So if I want to do something with this function, if I want to invoke it, then I do it just like I would anything else. I would just say speak, and then I call it. And if I run my code, there it is. This is a method. Okay, so a method is just a a property of an object that happens to be a function. Does that make sense? It does make sense, yes. Cool. So these are really useful um, because uh, it allows you to kind of group functionalities together um, that are related potentially. Um, for example, uh, you know, you can think of all sorts of things like, for example, the, a string, right? I, I have, so if I, if I have some string that says hello, for example, there's all sorts of cool methods that all strings have. And they're all kind of grouped together because they're all, they all affect the string that they're working with, right? So the, 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 the benefit of a method is that you have this, this way of kind of interacting with a, with a thing in a really dynamic way. So when I do stuff like uh, split, I can take a string and I can split it by a uh, comma or something. 
I can do stuff like uh, to lowercase, right? To uppercase. There's all sorts of really cool methods that strings have. Um, but the cool thing about all of them is that they are able to interact with the string itself. So that's the real kind of magic of a method is that um, you can interact with the object that that method is a part of. So let me show you what I mean. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to write a function And uh, with the new syntax in JavaScript, there's actually several ways to do this. Um, I can do, instead of saying speak colon and then function, I can actually just simplify it like this. Um, I don't know if you've seen that before, but if you see this in like documentation or tutorials or whatever, just know that this is just a, a, a more concise way of writing methods on an object. So what I can do though, What's cool about this is I can now say something like this, console log, hello, my name is, and then I could do this, right? They match, but I could change that. But if I changed it here, I'd have to change it here. And that kind of breaks the rule of don't repeat yourself. So, inside of this function, I actually have a reference to the object itself. And it has a special name and it's called this. And this is probably the most confusing thing in JavaScript just because of how it's named. But to be honest with you, I can't come up with a better name for it um, because it is exactly what you think it is. It's this, it's this object that the function is a part of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hello, my name is this dot name. So when you see the keyword this, what you should immediately think is, oh, this is an object. Um, and then the next question you have to ask yourself is, okay, well, which object? So in the case of this example, what is the this reference? What is, what is it referring to? <laughs> the constant person. Yeah, exactly. So if I were to say person dot uh, speak, there it is. Okay, cool. That's pretty awesome. Um, okay, so Now, what I just did though, is I have literally written, I have literally written this function, I've defined it in the, the block of this, this person object. Um, so which kind of is, is limiting, right? Because if I wanted to make another person, then I'd basically have to, um, uh, I'll do my brother. I'd have to write this all over again, right? Like this seems, seems a little redundant, doesn't it? Very much so. Very much so. So, well, um, what we're gonna do is instead of rewriting this function, which is literally the same thing, just getting repeated, why don't we abstract that away and just write a function called speak? The question is, and I'm gonna copy this guy as well. The question though is without um, if we were to just look at this function by itself, 
Is there enough information here to answer the question of what does this refer to? No. No, why not? It's not being called to anything and it's just kind of out there. Yeah, like, like what would happen if I did this? You wouldn't see anything. Yeah. And what I'm going to do, before we take a look at this, though, why don't we just port this back into the, um, the objects that we have, OK? So person speak, and then we'll do person one speak. All right, so I would expect to see these two names here. So what do you think that tells you about how uh, functions work uh, in this in this way? When we're um, when we use the keyword this, this object uh, the, the this keyword is referring to the object that this function is being invoked upon um, as a method. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, cool. So um, suppose I do this. Okay, so the question is, what will the keyword this refer to in this uh, in this example? Will it be person or will it be this guy? Brother. Yeah. And again, that's because the function is being, this function is a method of this object, right? Yes, it's a sub property of person, but it's a direct property of this. It's, it's literally a method on the brother. Okay, so the this value, the this um, reference will always be to the object that the function is a method on. So that's something really important to remember. Um, so do you have any questions about that? Anybody? I mean, I find, I know how that could be so helpful, but I could also see it being very harmful as well, because you could lose place of where this is actually coming from. Yeah, that's a really great point. Um, and that's something that you have to be aware of is, um, uh, that's, that's what's challenging, is basically you're assuming when you write this code that this is going to be something that has a name, right? So what I'm gonna do is uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna try something. Um, I'm gonna console log, or I don't need to console log, I'm going to speak just out in the open, okay? What do you think we're gonna see? Is it gonna be an error? Is it gonna just blow up? Or is it just gonna see nothing? Like, what do you think is gonna happen? I think we're going to see something, but I, I'm not sure what we're going to see. All right, well, let's find out. You're gonna run it. Okay, there you go. So what does that tell you about the this object that is being referred to in this function. So we didn't get an error, right? So it, it ran okay. But what does that tell you about the, the this object? We don't know what this is. So all we know is that it doesn't have a property name, but we haven't actually seen what the this object is. Let's, let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna write a function called see this. Okay, and all I'm going to do is console log this. 
Oops, oops, not capital. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to call this function, and uh, let's see what we let's see what we look at. Holy crap! Okay, is there anything there that looks familiar at all? No. Have you seen a? Have you used set interval before? Oh, I have actually. Yeah. So, so what's interesting is be, so I'm in the node environment right now. Um, so what we're seeing is uh, the the global the global object. Okay. So even though so it looks like I'm calling this out in the open, right? And but remember, I'm calling this out in the global scope. Um, this isn't just in the ocean. It's at the end of the day, this still has to be part of something. And in this case, it's part of the node environment that we're running this program in. So uh, what we're seeing is the this attached to the global object. So it's not um, it's not explicit, but it's actually very similar to doing this. Uh, what is it? Global, sorry, global this. Oh, what is it? Just global, I forget what it's called because you never actually, I forget what it's called. But um, the, maybe it's just global. Did I already do that? I feel like I already did that. Yeah, okay, I don't remember what it's called. It doesn't matter, you hardly ever see it. So there's there's an object here. There's an implicit object here, and it's the global scope. Uh, but what's interesting, if I were to define an object, you know, some object, and now all of a sudden I do this, okay, well, what do you think I'm going to see when I call this function? Everything that we just saw? Nope, we're only going to see the object that the the method is uh, a property of because it's no longer on the global right it's no longer on the global object it's now a method on this object that we've just defined okay does that make sense yeah cool now if uh, i were to go into a let's go to a blank page really quick this is just so you can see uh, another example. So now we're in a browser environment and let's see what happens if I just console log this. We're still looking at VS code. Oh, you know what? Let me uh, make sure that I'm sharing the entire screen. All right. How about that? Is that better? Yes. Okay. Uh, let, me, let me do this again. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to console log this and check it out. It's this gigantic object. Most of this shouldn't look familiar, but some of it should. So for example, um, uh, document, does that look, uh, does that look uh, familiar? Document looks familiar. The children, mm -hmm. child nodes, body. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So uh, in the browser environment, the global this is the window, whereas in a node environment, it's just different. Uh, it's a different object that has a different set of properties. Um, some, but they do share some similarities. Uh, the set interval exists in both. Uh, set timeout exists in both. There's a few that uh, that do share, but there's no DOM. There's no document, right? Because it's Node. It's, it's living outside of the browser. There's there's no concept of a browser in Node. Um, but anyways, that's it. That's for a separate episode. So um, what I but what I'm hoping that you guys get from this is the fact that uh, this is totally dependent on how or it's totally dependent on what object the function is called from. So if you call it from the global scope, you're going to this is going to refer to the actual global object uh, or the global scope. Whereas 
um, uh, if you call it from an object or even a nested object, it's going to refer to the object of which is a property or a method on. That's the real key takeaway. So with that said, uh, before we go to arrow functions, uh, is there anything, any clarification that uh, you guys need? Uh, any questions? No, I think I'm good. Okay, cool. No, I'm good. So, awesome. All right. So now let's look at arrow functions. Okay. So we're going to, I'm going to get rid of all this. Okay, I'm going to write a function called see this, just like we did before, um, but this time I'm going to write it as an arrow function. Okay, we're going to run it. Anyone want to place their bets on what, what we'll see? Anybody? Ten bucks? Five bucks? I'm kidding. Let's do it. See what happens. See the... Um array that has the function see this inside of it. Okay. Let's see. Wah, wah. <laughs> it's it's nothing. We literally aren't seeing anything. Oh wait, hold on. Duh. It would hoist up oh, to the global, wouldn't I, it? That's what I that's what I meant to see. <laughs> what was that, Shane? No, nothing. Never mind. I misread that. So uh, that's quite a bit different, right? Than what we saw before, which is that object. Yeah, why is that? So this is the difference between arrow functions and uh, function declarations. Arrow functions will not create a reference to the object in which it's being invoked from. Okay, so like if I were to make a person and I was to see, or let, let's make it a little more general. So I have some object, whatever it is. Okay, and if I do this, in the other examples, we, we would see the object, right? Like, so I've got some property called foo and it's set to bar, you know, to use the, typical example lingo. Um, normally we would see the object, right? Like when we call when we call this function, we would see the object with the property foo and the, the method see this. But arrow functions don't do that. They simply just it's just an empty object by default. Okay, so the only way to see um, a, uh, the only way for the keyword this in an arrow function to have any value or meaning um, aside from an empty object is it will have to inherit a this that is already defined. So let me show you what I mean by this. So let's say Let's say I have a function called, uh, or sorry, I have an object called the dictionary. Okay. And it has words. And then uh, I have a thing called um, um, search. Okay. So what we're going to do is we'll, we'll just add some, we'll add some words here. So we'll say dictionary dot words. Uh, this technically isn't really a dictionary. It's more of a word list. Because um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say push and we'll just put some random words in there. Hi. List. Uh,
Okay, so if I want to search for a word, then that means that uh, I'm going to have to write some logic that kind of searches through that array. Okay. So the first question is, if I want to be able to interact with that property, with that value, um, what kind of function does this need to be? If I want to be able to talk to that property based on what we've seen so far. Non-arrow one. Yeah, it's gotta be a non-arrow function because if I do this and if I, cause we know that we need to search through this array but without going through the logic, if, if I even wanna be able to access this.words, I need to have uh, I need to have a reference to this. And unfortunately, arrow functions don't do that by themselves. So for now, let's just write, just so we can verify that, we're gonna say dictionary search, and uh, we're gonna get undefined because again, there's no concept of a this. It's an empty object by default in an arrow function. But okay, so let's, um, let's, uh, change this back to a, to a thing. So, okay, so we're gonna write some logic here um, in a second, but uh, before we do that, let's, uh, again, now that I've written this as a function declaration, as opposed to an error function, we're gonna see how um, this is different. Check it out. We now can see our, our object that we're dealing with. So that's, that's awesome. That's what we need. Uh, so what we need to do though, is we need to be able to find, of course, a word in this list. Again, it's not a dictionary technically, um, but that's, that's totally fine. Um, is there a term that encapsulates both pre-ES6 functions? Uh, what do you like mean declaration by and expressions? Say things oh, that are oh, not yeah. So there's, functions? my understanding is that there's, uh, Okay, that's a good question. So my understanding is there's two types. There's function declaration, which is when you say, um, uh, you know, some function like this. Use the function keyword. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, and then when you use function, when you use a function like anonymously, that's a function expression. So this yeah. would be a function expression. But there's no word that like. I guess, I guess they are different enough that, yeah. Yeah, and, and so like whether they're anonymous or not, um, like you can have a function expression that's anonymous or that's not, right? So this would be non-anonymous, non-anonymous. That's a hard word to say, right? It's still a function expression, but it's, an, it's not an anonymous expression. Whereas this is a function declaration. I, I could be wrong, um, but that's my understanding. Yeah, no, that sounds, I just didn't know if there was a word that took both of those in, but I guess they're, you know, that are non-arrow functions, but they're different enough, yeah. especially with hoisting. Yeah, that's a good question. Like, I don't, I don't know if there really is a term because prior to arrow functions, they were just called functions. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's a good question. I'm not really sure. Um, I just know them as declarations versus uh, expressions. And there's no equivalent to a fun to a, an arrow, um, uh, 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 expression or uh, a declaration, right? But like hoists and stuff. No. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, uh, arrow functions do not hoist. Uh, Xavier, I'm not, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the concept of hoisting. If not, it's okay. We'll get, we'll we'll do that later. Yeah. Have you heard of? Is that concept familiar to you? Nope. <laughs> okay, that's okay. We won't. Um, we're gonna get to that later because it's not as important of a concept. Um, at least now with ES6 being so prevalent, um, but we'll get there. So anyways, let's go back to, uh, back to this function. So we know now that our, by running our search method as a function declaration um, uh, on this dictionary object, we, we can now access our words using the this keyword, which is cool. Um, so, now we can actually write some logic here for grabbing uh, 
the words. So of course we could say, we're gonna assume that there's some keyword, okay? Uh, and we want to find, um, we wanna find um, the first word that matches, okay? Uh, we could write a more complicated search algorithm that you know finds a substring or whatever, but we'll just say we're looking for a word. If you have it, cool, if not, then we won't return anything. So what we'll do is we'll say this dot words dot uh, uh, the find method um, seems perfectly fine for this example. So we've got our existing word um, and uh, notice I'm writing a, a, an arrow function. Um, we'll do it in both ways. To see if there's, you know, see if there's if the difference if it makes a difference in this case. So, all right, we're saying find me a word such that um, the word in the list is equal to the keyword. Okay, so if I'm here, let's. Uh, look for a word, first of all, that is not in our list. Be back, console. Uh, welcome, Gwendolyn. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna run this guy. Let's uh let's see what happens. Let me clear that so it's a little easier to read. All right, so uh, it's not there. So we should just see the uh we should see either null or undefined. I always forget. I think find returns null if it's not a. There we go. Undefined. Okay, it didn't find the word. Okay, well let's uh, do a different one. Hey, check it out, I found it. Sweet. Okay, so notice how if I were to write this as a normal function, it wouldn't actually change. Uh, in, this, in this particular case, it, it wouldn't actually matter. or you wouldn't really see an effect because notice how I'm not using the keyword this anywhere in this function. So if you're not using the keyword this at all, then whether you use a uh, function declaration or a uh, arrow function, it, it's probably not gonna make a difference. Um, so in this case, you know, again, I'm gonna see the same thing. Logic's the same. I'm using a different type of function, but my result is the same. However, things get weird when, suppose I did need to use the keyword this inside of this callback function. Um, so uh, let me think, um, let me think of an example of, uh, Suppose, um, suppose I wanted to uh, get the word and then all the words that, um, this is kind of arbitrary, but suppose I, I wanna search for a word, but then all the words that have the same number of characters is that word. Uh, I don't know why you'd want that, but let's say you do. So I'll call this method, um, uh, Um, same uh, car count, same same car count. Okay, so got our word. Okay, so again, it'll be kind of similar. We're gonna say, okay, we're gonna find our word.
and uh, I'm going to write it this way with the the function declaration. Okay, we've got a word. Okay, everything's the same. Uh, our logic is going to be a little different. We're going to ask the question. Okay, if you find a word that matches, then get all the words that have the same um, get all the words that have the same number of characters as well. Okay, so that'll be just a little bit different. Uh, we'll just make sure to create an output array. Um, and then, uh, oh, we have to here, not down there. Okay, and we're gonna say, okay, if the word and I didn't I didn't really have to use find I could use a for each there's a lot of different ways to do this um, I'm doing it this way just so I can demonstrate the the way that this works inside of a callback in this case so okay we're saying if word is equal to oh and I should probably call that keyword so that I'm not using the the word word twice so if our word is equal to the keyword then, well, we would like to search through the words again, right? So can we do um, can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do something like this where we, you know, return uh, word dot length equals um, word dot length. Does anybody see any immediate problems with that? Does it seem, does it seem okay? Using the this within the constant like words, mm -hmm. I'm gonna run into an issue because it's uh, not inheriting. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, could you expand on that? You say it's not inheriting. Can, uh, what do you mean by that? So the this above it hasn't hasn't art. It hasn't been defined, right? So it can't pass anything down again. Sorry, you cut out there at the last part. What was that again? I don't think it can be passed down because there was not anything truly defined to be passed down. Okay, uh, that's a um, that's a good that's a good hypothesis. Um, it's not quite accurate though. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a um, I'm going to open my my debugger here. Uh, so we can actually see what's going on. So let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna do a uh, what same car count. And instead of test, we're gonna do we're gonna do foo. Okay, so I should I'm I'm hoping to get an array back that has all the words with the same number of letters. So that would be foo and bar. They both have three. Um, so we're going to kind of look at this step by step, though. I'll put a breakpoint there. And uh, we'll just run this guy. OK, so here we go. Here's our keyword, foo. That's what we're looking for. OK, here's our output array. Uh, I'm going to put another breakpoint here. OK, and uh, we're going to there's that global object. Okay, so 
Okay, so in the function, in the in the function that we're in right now, uh, notice we've got the uh, word, and then we've got this keyword. Those are the two variables we've got access to, right? So we're comparing on our first iteration. We're we're comparing hi to uh, to foo. Obviously, they're not the same. So if I continue, I'm gonna go into the next word, uh, which in this case is test. Let's go until we find the actual word we're looking for. So foo and foo, they match. Okay, that's exciting. So we're gonna go to the next thing. And this is where it's gonna get a little interesting. Uh, if I hover over this guy, what a... What's going on here? It's at the global. Yeah, it's the global this. So whereas over here, um, actually not, that's not giving us a very good, that's actually not accurate. Um, that should be, no, sorry, I'm gonna reset this one sec. This is what I wanted to point out. So hovering over this, that looks like what I would expect, right? It's um, this is referring to the dictionary, right? It's got a words property, a search method, and the same character count method. That shouldn't be surprising at all, right? Now, as we go into the, uh, as we go further down though, Okay, we're getting, we're comparing word to keyword. Okay, cool. We're gonna go until we find, uh, until we go to the word we're looking for, which is foo. Uh, the problem is that once we get down here, are this reference is different. <laughs> so the question is, does, does this object, this global object, uh, does that have a property called words, do you think? It may, but we don't, we don't know. Yeah, it may. Uh, it probably doesn't. And in fact, it doesn't, because as I hover over it, you can see it says undefined. So now we've got a problem. Like up here in the scope of this function, uh, this was perfectly fine because it was referring to the dictionary. But all of a sudden, we have a new function call over here, um, which in this case, it's this is no longer that this. And that's the confusing thing about this, because it, it can change depending on the context in which the function is called. And so our functions, act, our, so our code's actually going to break now, because there's no property called words therefore it's undefined and undefined doesn't have a property called filter. So we're going to get this error, cannot read property filter of undefined. So we've got a problem because uh, we, we still want to reference, um, we still want to reference words, right? Like, so we've got a couple of workarounds. Um, we can capture the keyword this by saying something like this. And then we can replace all instances nice. of this with self. Okay. And um, we could even, uh, and let's see if that solves it. So let's go ahead and um, run the debugger. Okay, we'll go here. Okay, again, self is referring to the to the actual um, dictionary object. Okay, cool. So we're gonna go down and we'll continue. And okay, we go we go down, skip ahead till we get to foo. Uh, we'll go to the next line and uh, check it out. Look at that. It works. So what we did is instead of using the this that is newly created, newly referenced in this callback function, we're just maintaining the reference to this over here. And this was the pattern that you had to use prior to ES6. 
Um, but it got to be kind of a pain because sometimes as your callbacks got deeper and deeper, uh, sometimes you would actually need to keep track of multiple this context. And it could kind of be hard to do that. You'd have to like name this like, you know, dictionary self, and then you'd have like word self. And then like, you know, it could, it could go on and on and on, um, which would be, um, it could get, it could get kind of complicated. Real quick, not not just say that this is what you should do, but I'm curious. You could use a, a dot bind here, right? Mm -hmm. At the end of that, okay. Oh uh, wait, sorry. Maybe I'll say give you. Um, so at the end of that, the the function uh, under that's being passed into self dot words dot find, you could uh -huh. do dot bind this. Oh yeah, it. yeah, and yeah, I okay. just don't want to get there yet. No, 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 no. Yeah. I just was yeah. making sure I understood. Absolutely, that. there there um there are ways to override this behavior. Um, which I won't, I, I may get into, um, at the end. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there, there are a, a multitude of ways of handling the situation. Um, uh, the easiest way, or at least the most straightforward way is to actually use ES6 functions. And this is kind of what they're for is when you're dealing with this, like nested level of thisness. Um, I just made up that word. So what we could do instead of using these, these functions that every time they get defined, uh, the this value could potentially change, which makes it hard to manage which, which this we're talking about. So what we're gonna do now, um, and let me finish the logic here. I'm not actually quite done. Uh, so we're gonna just set output equals, uh, um, or uh, let's do do output equals that, and then at the end of all this, we'll return the output. That way, at least our logic is 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 done. So what we're gonna do is uh, instead of worrying about redefining self and and stuff like that, we're just gonna use ES6 functions which like I said earlier, they simply inherit whatever this value is already defined um, in uh, the most recent scope. So what I mean by that is in this case, here's our this, which we have introduced here. And so now if I change this into an arrow function like this, and I'll get rid of this, uh, I, I don't like the parentheses in most cases, ah, but my linter does it anyways. Anyways, so we're gonna use an arrow function and we're gonna maintain this use of this, okay? And uh, for a good measure, we'll just, we'll, uh, we'll turn this into an arrow function as well. I have just a quick question. Go ahead. Uh, the constant output not being equal or assigned to anything yep. until later on. Yep. Um, could you explain that? This is the first time I'm seeing that. Yeah, sure. So this is just a way of kind of uh, declaring that a variable exists without giving it a value. Um, you could do that with let and you could do that with var as well. Um, the reason I'm doing it up here is because I need to be able to access the output in the scope of this function. Um, meanwhile, there's all this fancy stuff happening in this lower level scope. And what I want to do is I want to say, okay, introduce this variable, set that variable to some value, and then output it here. It's just a way it's like scope management. Okay. Uh, it's a common pattern um, that you'll see. Um, does that make sense? It does make sense. It's it's really eye opening for me. I haven't seen that done before. Yeah, and it's it's not the only way to do it. Like I could do this, for example, and I could be like, um, uh, I could say output dot push, and then take all the things that lived in here. Yeah, which is what I'm having to do. And like spread that up. Like you could do that too. Uh, there's a thousand different ways to do this. The way this looks a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would agree with you. So 
there's that. Um, cool. So I hope that I hope that makes sense. So now we're gonna we're gonna go through that same series of breakpoints, but we're gonna just look at the this value um, at each juncture. Okay, so there's this juncture. And then there's this juncture, uh, and then we'll look at it in here too, um, you know, just for good measure. So let's run this again. Um, hopefully, uh, our logic is sound. Okay, cool. So this, of course, um, uh, is referring to the dictionary because we we have to we have to use this function as a declaration so that we can at least introduce the correct. Um, value for this, which is the uh, the dictionary object. Uh, okay, let's uh, skip to the next guy. Okay, cool. So uh, we'll go until this is until um, the word and keyword are foo. Okay, cool. There they are. Beautiful. Um, and now check this out. Do you see how this is the same this as it was up here? That didn't happen last time, and this is the this this is the behavior of ES6 functions in uh, in essence, where the 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 value for this is going to be whatever it ha whatever it currently is in the most recent scope, which in this case is up here. And if I were to use infinitely many arrow functions nested deeply and deeply and deeply or deeper and deeper and deeper, you would see this value being the same, which is, of course, the dictionary. And this is really useful. And uh, frameworks like React and stuff, once you get into those, you, you'll really start to see the benefit of, of these ES6 callbacks and stuff. Um, but anyway, so OK, cool. There's our this. We got our words. We're able to filter now, um, right? Like Because we can now have a reference to that array. Um, and then uh, if we skip further down, uh, all right, here's our first word. Okay, beautiful. Uh, we can compare the length to the word that we're looking for. Um, and oh crap, that's supposed to say keyword, not, not word. So that will break our logic. Uh, let me reset that. Okay, we'll go here. Okay, cool. And if we were to look inside of this value, so I don't have it explicitly written in here, but if I were to look up the value for this, oh, the debugger is not recognizing it. That's weird. I'm not sure why. Um, but anyways, it would be, it would be this guy. And at the end, we should see uh, our return value should be foo and bar if I wrote this logic right. So let's skip out of here. And then uh, this console I found. Uh, oh, duh, that has to say let, not const. So I'm redefining it. Oops. There we go. There's our answer. Does that make sense? Anybody have any questions about that? No, no. Cool. Does that help kind of uh, clarify some of the differences between ES6 and uh, normal functions, uh, Xavier? Yeah, it definitely did. Cool. Appreciate that. Yeah. So it'll take some time and practice to just start seeing the pattern here. Um, but this is a, it's got, I know it's an arbitrary example, but I think it illustrates the, the concept pretty well. Um, but I do want to bring up some cool stuff that uh, Shane mentioned, because um, we, we have some time. Uh, and it has to do with the function constructor. This is really cool. I think this is like so sick. So I'm sure most of you are already familiar with the built-in constructor functions that already exist for um, the main data types. 
uh, in JavaScript, such as string um, or array. Uh, probably seen capital O object. Um, there's the number uh, constructor. Um, and they let you do some cool stuff, right? I can be like, hey, give me a new number based on the value 10. And then when I console log x, I'm going to see the number 10. OK, that's cool. Um, I could do the same with strings, right? Uh, now I'm going to see a string instead of a number, obviously. Um, uh, I can do stuff with uh, arrays even. So I can define an array using the constructor. And uh, you can, what this number means is how big you want the array to be. So if I create an array, I now have an array that has 10 empty items. I'd have to fill them with actual values, um, but I have an array of, of 10 elements in length. And uh, if you- Which is great because then you can, uh, when you are defining them, you can define them by uh, an index. Whereas if it's starting from blank, you can't do that. Well, you can it technically, up. it'll dynamically adjust. Will it really? Yeah, yeah, so like, yeah, sorry, this is a slight side, but it's cool. I can say array 10 equals 10. And then if you console log array, what? It'll show. Um, so what, okay, so what if you try to now target array seven? Yeah, so then seven. this is gonna be undefined. Okay. That's crazy. Okay, mind blown, thank you. Yep. That's what I'm here for. Blow your minds. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, sorry, tangent. That, that's a cool, fun little fact, though. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. So the, we just did a grand tour of all the, you know, main um, constructors, uh, which, of course, give you things like, um, like two lowercase. So, for example, you know, if you ever wondered where, uh, um, to lowercase comes from, well, it comes from the, the prototype to lowercase, which exists on the string constructor. Um, Xavier, if you haven't gone into prototypes and stuff yet, don't worry. Uh, um, you don't need to know that stuff to at least appreciate this. Um, but basically prototype is just the object that gives all of the instances of a particular um, in object-oriented programming in a class, or in the case of JavaScript, which is prototypical inheritance, uh, it's a object which gives all of an instance's methods. So when you have a thing like hello, and you want to call the function um, split, well, the reason why it's able to do this is because the string hello inherits from the string constructors prototypes, which give it all of its methods. Um, so it's just a way of delegating methods and properties to um, actual values. That's all you need to know for this. So for example, we know with arrays, um, uh, we're, we've, we just used several Right, so I'm able if I I'm able to call like the filter method. I'm able to call the sort method. And the reason why I'm able to do that is because there is an array constructor which has a prototype which contains all those things. So we got push, we got map for each, um, filter, find, etc. So if you've ever wondered where all those come from, they live on the prototype of the array constructor. Fun fact. Functions have the same thing. So this is really sick. There is, in fact, a function constructor, which seems weird, but it's true. You can, uh, all functions are instances of the function constructor. So check this out. I can 
dynamically create a function and it's pretty sick. So I'm gonna call this, uh, I don't know, func, just cause I can't think of anything else. And I'm going to do a new function. So this is really cool because now I can define what my arguments are. So I'll just do a simple, um, let's, call it, let's call this sum. I'm gonna make a function that adds two numbers together. Okay, so here's our function and it's gonna take two arguments, x, y, and then um, And then you can define what the body of the function looks like. I think I wrote this right. It's actually not very common to do this. And that's just as a string? Mm -hmm. so, uh, if you've ever seen eval. Eval, yeah. But isn't that like, like grotesquely frowned upon? Like, oh, yes. For safety. So yes. how is this safer? I, I never said it was safer. I just okay, said it was okay. cool. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Check it out. It worked. So yeah, this this is generally dangerous <laughs> because this lets you dyna dynamically create functions in a like a whole at a whole other level, right? But it's cool that you can do this. Um, the reason why I point this out is because if you remember, um, if you remember the default behavior of a function is to have its this value be referencing the object on which it's from which it's being invoked. So suppose I have some math object. I'll call it, no, I don't want to call it math because there's already a math object in JavaScript. Let's call this um, uh, arithmetic. Thank you. I was like, it starts with an A, arithmetic. Okay, so I've got this arithmetic object. Okay, sum. Okay, so um, now I'll have X and I'll have y, and I'll do five, and I'll do three. Okay, let's see what happens um, when I do Let's see what happens. Oh, I have to obviously. Okay, let's see what happens. Hey, check it out, it worked. Okay, so that shouldn't be surprising. It's doing its default behavior, however, Remember, uh, functions, um, because they, um, they also have a set of methods, which is weird, I know. Method, uh, functions, even though they are functions, they also have methods, which they uh, inherit from the function prototype. Suppose I have some other object. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna remove this sum entirely, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use one of the built-in methods that uh, JavaScript provides or that the function constructor provides. Um, it's called, uh, there's several, um, there's call, there's apply, and there's bind. Uh, they're, they're all very, very similar, but what they let you do is actually manipulate the value or the reference to the this object. They let you change the default behavior of the function declaration. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this, uh, I'm gonna rename my variable a little bit. 
So we got five or five and two. You would probably never do this in real life, but, or at least with numbers like this, this is kind of silly, but I think it's instructive. So 10, 10 and 10. Okay, so if I wanna, if I wanna uh, call sum on one of these functions or on one of these objects, I could put it as a property of the object, sure. But I could also just straight up tell the function which context, which this value to actually use, which is pretty sick. So for example, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna say bind and I'm gonna say, in this case, I want you to bind to the five and two object, okay? So that creates a function called, and in fact, that, uh, let, me, let me write this in a way that's a little bit um, more intuitive. So if I do um, sum.bind and I say five and two, what that does is, is bind returns a function which is identical to the original function it's just that it has a this value that is bound to whatever you assigned it that's why it's called bind so now when i say add five and two it's just a function that adds five and two together. Okay, well, suppose I um, switch the objects and I say 10 and 10. Okay, and I'm gonna call this add 10 and 10. And let's see what happens. Boom, we get 20. So by uh, explicitly telling the function what this value to bind it to, um, you can dynamic, you, you can basically have it behave however you want, regardless of where it lives in the scope. And so that's something that Shane was bringing up earlier, um, where instead of using the const self equals this, uh, thing that I did, you could also use bind. You could also use apply or call. They're similar. Um, they all kind of are serve similar purposes. Um, apply is a little different. So apply says, uh, for example, um, they all take the, the this object that you want to do. Um, but what's interesting here is that this actually calls the function. Okay, so apply will actually call it. It doesn't create a function. So in this case, I'd want to do result. That's why it's called apply, because it's like, hey, call a function, but give it these parameters instead. There we go, there's 20. So, and then of course, if this had arguments, you'd put your arguments here, one after another. Um, in React, uh, bind is actually very important, although in the later renditions, now that there's hooks, um, they're actually getting away from using class-based uh, components, which thankfully they're doing because they're kind of a pain. Anywho, so I know that's a lot of information, but does anybody have any questions? Is this something so I, I know you were saying it's not probably the most highly recommended thing to do, but is this something that I should learn how to do? Yeah, it's something that you should be aware of. Um, it's a really important concept. So the example that I'm doing here is a little bit arbitrary um, and, and not really that practical, but I chose this example because I think it illustrates the concept. Um, okay, gotcha. Which is the idea that uh, um, you can dynamically change the this concept, or sorry, the this reference on a function 
using the built-in methods that are given to you by the function constructor. Now, I didn't have to do it this way. I, I easily, I could have just done this. This is effectively the same. In fact, it's the same thing. Um, so but I just wanted to show you the function constructor because it's cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So as far as using the constructor or, or eval for a string, if if I'm doing something outside of a browser environment where there are no inputs from other people, um, like I mean, I guess the, is the only safety risk that I fuck it up, you know, in that process. Like that, I just that it seems like there are many situations that I use. I use JavaScript on um, microcontrollers a lot, and then just you know, new node stuff to automate things on my computer. Um, I, I guess, is there any other reason not to do? Because the main risk, right, is that somebody's going to do something nefarious with that string, right? I say that or is the bigger, one more time. Like, is the, the bigger risk with that that an outside entity is going to use it to hack in because they can put, you know, or is it that right. you're going to write your code wrong and you're going to screw it up? Yeah, I mean both. Like, like here's a. I don't. I don't know if I'll be able to do this perfectly, but like you know, for example, um, <laughs> okay, and then if I console log this. <laughs> so I just hacked myself. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I'm still going to use it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, does anybody does anybody else have any any questions? Um. Yeah. I mean, this is going back a little bit, but um, yeah. in what instances would it be better or are there any instances would it be better to use uh, function declarations over arrow functions? Is this what we're seeing that will example? Like yeah, that's a great question. So in general, I tend to default to arrow functions unless I know that I need to um, be conscious of this. You just ran into one yesterday, right? Helping um... Mac, that's probably a, a hard ex example to explain, right? But he was using an arrow function and needed to do a regular. Are, you, are you talking to me or are you talking to Zach? Oh, we're talking to you. Uh, when you, oh. uh, when didn't you, you were, when you were doing the, the thing with, um, was it Mac that you were doing it with? Uh, uh, no, 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 no. I know what you're talking about. It wasn't Mac. It was um, uh, Steve. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Exactly. So he had a case where, so in in um, in Mongo in MongoDB, uh, there's this concept of a model, which is just a template for what a what something should look like in a database. It's just a description of, you know, the properties that something should have. Um, that's an oversimplification, but, uh, and he was trying to apply a method to this template this model um and it wasn't working and when i looked at it immediately it was like oh it's because you're using an arrow function and you're trying to use this inside of it without any reference to there was no other this that existed anywhere in that scope so he was just getting just a blank i, I think it was like a he's getting a reference error um and so that was a that was a, a typical case of like, oh crap, that was a case where you actually did need to use a, a, a function declaration because you actually needed to have access to the this property. And I will just throw out there, I know I know that you know, sorry. Um, I know this is different than you know, because so a function uh, God, I'm going to get this wrong. Declaration versus an expression of any kind, arrow or otherwise, doesn't hoist, 
right? Am I getting that ordered correctly? A declaration uh, does hoist, an expression does not, correct? Is that right? Um, I think so, yeah. So like, yeah, yeah. for example, um, oh yeah, hoisting, that was the other thing I was gonna talk about. Um, uh, so first of all, hoisting is just the idea of um, the scope of a function being accessible even though it was written after it. So for example, normally in code, when you see something like this, uh, I'm gonna do do thing. And if I have a thing, like, so Xavier looking at that, that seems like that shouldn't work, right? <laughs> Yeah, it should. Because I'm calling a function that hasn't even been declared yet, right? Mm -hmm. um, interestingly enough, this actually works. <laughs> this is called hoisting. So whenever you have a function uh, defined this way on the, the global scope, um, it actually uh, the reason why they call it hoisting is because all of your methods, which are defined like this, will get basically placed to the top of the scope prior to executing everything else. So that's why that works. However, however, this does not work. Okay. The reason why is because this is just a this is just a variable. It happens to be a function. Okay, cool. But it's a variable, and that's not going to work. It's going to break. It's a it's a um, hasn't been initialized yet. And it's the same with you know anything else. So like if you try to do this, like that's also this also won't work. Am I, am I remembering correctly that var hoists, but not let and const? Is that right? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not actually sure. Let's, uh, let's try. Okay, that doesn't work either. Okay. This one might work though. I, yeah, I feel like var, no, I've never tried it with a either. function, but like var is a, for, you could define it lower for just like a variable. I feel like, uh, wait, what do I, you mean? I might be like if I if I I can reference it before I define it as if it's you know never mind never mind I'm just I'll I'll actually try it before I like put it out there as an idea but I think okay. that I run into that <laughs> word. Um, but yeah, so that's hoisting. Uh, it's just the idea that um, when you write a function a certain way, uh, it'll actually become available on the scope uh prior to it actually being like written uh as far as like in your actual code it gets it gets moved to the top it gets hoisted to the top that's that's kind of why they called it hoisting it's because it's taking stuff from the bottom and bringing it up to the top but it only works for functions nothing else ever gets hoisted otherwise it'd be I mean, it's hard enough to understand hoisting and then to add more hoisting for other things, that would be terrible. So that's hoisted. Um, something like this would not work, uh, I don't think. So if I have, if I have a function like this, um, which is a function, def, uh, function definition or function expression, I mean, I don't think this would work either. Be wrong though. Yeah, that yeah, that one that won't work either. So it's only when you define it like that. So yeah, hope that makes sense. Whew, all right, well, that was a lot of information, guys. I hope that I didn't drown you with knowledge. Um but uh, yeah, I'll leave the time. I'll leave the rest of the time for questions if there are any. 
the thing that I struggle with the most, well, obviously, besides all the new information that you shared tonight, thanks. Yeah. Um, but the thing that I struggle with the most in trying to use functions properly is mm -hmm. uh, the, using the arguments with them. Okay. Um, yeah. That, that quite a bit with how you write out your function. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, um, and then with ES6, there's like a thousand different ways to write them. So it gets even more confusing. Um, but that is a super common problem that everyone has when they're learning this stuff. So, you know, don't, don't worry that, that it might be a little confusing. Um, the way that I try to break it down or the way that I learned it was that, uh, first of all, I try to be very precise with my vocabulary. And this is true with coding generally, the more precise you are with your um, definitions and the, the vocabulary that you assign to concepts, the more consistent you will be um, as you try to work around this stuff. So I try, I try very hard to be very precise in, in my language, and that really helps with understanding. So what I was talking about, like earlier, I was talking about function expressions versus function declarations uh, um, versus function definitions or whatever. Um, those all fall into the category of, of defining a function. Okay. So whether, whether it's anonymous or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, when we're defining a function, however it looks, um, so, uh, hello world, I don't need an extra W. Okay. So how... However, I'm defining it, whether I'm doing it that way or if I'm doing it this way. The key here is that I am defining a function. Okay, it's the equivalent of writing a recipe. Um, it is not the thing itself. It is not the baked good. Um, it is the recipe for the baked good or the pizza or whatever it is. And this is where your logic goes, um, but it is completely disassociated from any uh, actual real data. Okay, so when we're defining a function, we're defining only the behavior. And that's where parameters come into, into play. So a parameter, and, I, and I'm going to be very precise here, a parameter is uh, referred, or a parameter refers to the uh, variables that we place in these parentheses when we're defining a function. Okay, when we're defining a function. So I've got param1, I've got param2, etc. Okay. These are variables and we don't know what those are ahead of time, right? Like if I'm writing a recipe, I don't know what specific sugar I'm using. I have probably haven't even bought it from the store yet. I'm just working on the recipe. I just know that there is some sugar that's needed uh, in some amount. Uh, same with all the other ingredients. I may or may not have them in on the shelf at, in the kitchen. That's not the point. The point isn't to have the actual data, the actual things. The point is to have a reference to the concept of them. It's an abstraction. Does that make sense? It does, yes. Cool. So when we're defining a function, we define parameters, which are variables, which are stand-ins for data that we that we will see later when we have a when we are invoking a function this is when we were this is when we are doing the actual cooking this means that we grab the specific existing sugar off our shelf or from the store we grab the existing spices the existing flour etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera, that is literally existing. And that is when we call them arguments. Okay, so when I call my, uh, um, I'm going to call this bake. OK, 
Okay, and I'm going to do um, ingredient one, ingredient two, um, ingredient three, just for starters. Okay, and then, you know, whatever the logic is. So when I do my actual baking, that's when I put in my flour and my sugar and my spices. And I have, and because it's a recipe, I can reuse this as much as I want. There's nothing to stop me from putting in, I don't know, I've got my dough, I've got my chocolate, I've got my, I don't know, whatever. I don't know what this is, I'm not a baker. I don't know, I don't know anything about baking. But uh, anyways, the idea here is that uh, in this case, when I'm invoking a function, this is when I put in arguments. So in the case of an in invocation, they're called arguments. In the case of a definition, they're called parameters. Does that make sense? It does, yes. And so that's the best way to like make, if you can, if you can get really good at making that distinction in your head, uh, you will do well. Um, And, and really it just takes practice, to be honest with you. That breakdown made a lot of sense. Thank you for using an arrow function with it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and in this case, it wouldn't matter, right? Like uh, there are, you know, various ways of writing these. Um, just don't lose sight of that distinction between a parameter and an argument. As long as you don't lose sight of that, all of the little details on like the subtleties of writing implicit returns or, or, or explicit returns or like using the, the dot note, the, the triple dot notation, um, the spread operator, stuff like that, or destructuring, all of that crap. Those are just little uh, subtleties but they're all involved in how you define the parameters of a function when you're defining it. That's the key. That's like the key distinction, parameters versus arguments. And, and again, I could, you know, I could write it like this too. Same, same concept, right? Like no different, it looks different. I'm writing it differently. But again, this distinction is true. This is a definition. I am describing what the recipe is. I'm describing the logic here. I'm invoking it. I'm saying, go do the task. And that's functions. Now you know how functions work. Sweet. Just curious. Oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I don't have any questions. I'm going to take off. But thanks a lot, Ben. Yeah, no problem, Xavier. Have a good one. Uh, what's up, Zach? No, that's Zach. I'm, I'm taking off. Oh, oh, sorry. No. I, uh, my bad. I, you're not. I, I only see the names. Yeah, it's all good. So yeah, have a good night. Cool, you too. Um, so yeah, so is there one more question? Uh, yeah, just before I go, if mm -hmm. you run your function bake with just that one oh, you just told me how important it is to remember what those are that's not a ingredient is not a variable is it 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 is it's it a is. type of variable okay. it's a parameter parameter when you run with just the ingredient what what's going to be the outcome um you mean like if like when i run this this code right here uh -huh. Basically, if you pass in more arguments than there are parameters listed, it's going to ignore the ones that come after the ones that are defined. Okay. 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 So in this case, it would just be flower. These guys just straight up get ignored. Gotcha. Okay. I thought that was the case. I just wanted yeah. to sure. But But if I did this, then this handles um, the entire list, however arbitrarily long it may be. So that's nice when you when you're not sure how many arguments there might be to the function. That's useful. Um, you can also use an array 
as well. It just kind of depends. I mean, technically this is an array, um, but. All right. Yeah, this was all really beneficial. Thank you. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, well, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, next week, we're gonna be talking about Docker. Uh, if you're curious to know what that is, um, it's pretty cool. I'm curious, I'll be there. Cool, cool, man. All right, talk to you later. All right, see ya.